Hey, everyone. So the FBI, the CISA, the ODNI, and the NSA have teamed up to form the UCG, the Cyber Unified Coordination Group. This, gonna, this is going to allow coordination between all these agencies. And uh, I, don't, I don't see why they haven't done it sooner because this is pretty awesome, it sounds like. But this is a pretty serious compromise because if all these agencies are having to work together, it's, it's pretty bad, right? There's four efforts underway. They're going to identify victims. They're going to collect evidence. They're analyzing the evidence and determine you know, further attribution, as well as sharing the results with the government, private sectors, and trying to mitigate and resolve this breach. Now, what I'm going to go over is uh, mainly over what the CISA has provided, which is Sparrow, the PowerShell script file. The reason I'm going over it is because I want to educate you on the file. I want to uh, bring you aware to it. I'm going to actually just show you the PowerShell script file and actually show you what it actually does and how you can actually use this as one of your tools in the future to audit your Azure AD logs and be aware of this type of activity, right? And just keep in mind, Azure Sentinel would surface these alerts for you. So these particular strings you're looking for that's in the Sparrow tool could just surface as an alert in Azure Sentinel because it's already connected to those logs. But if you don't have Azure Sentinel, then this is where you would kind of dig to find that audit log. So we're going to get started with this and let me know what you think. All right, so the Sparrow tool, again, it was a tool created by the CISA and they, it's in written PowerShell, and we're just going to go through the tool and just give you some education so you know um, what you're running. Let's see. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code, and um, when you actually, um, you can either git clone this if you're familiar with GitHub. If you're not, just go ahead and just download the zip and just get that PowerShell script. That's really all it is. You don't really need anything else. Once, be sure to look at the readme. So it says the requirements for the tool is it, you need a read-only access. You need to assign a user or a security reader user or something like that. You need to have a compliance administrator so they can access unified audit logs. And then some exchange access so you can see if there's any kind of mail transport rules or um, anything within the exchange environment and in those logs, view those as well. See so installation, you're going to require these modules. The good thing is that Sparrow tool does come with a uh, installer. So first you're going to install these modules and then the Sparrow tool will import it. So it's automatically going to import the modules, but you do have to install these prior. Okay. And then when you want to use the tool, you can actually just invoke it. And then at the end right here, there's a, there is a semicolon. So that means that this will, this will download it. And then the next, this dot slash Sparrow PS1 that will run it. Okay. And if you're behind a proxy, this is, how, this is the commands for that. So let's run the command. So let's, uh, we got to install the uh, modules. What was the module names? Mm. Exchange Online Management Module, Azure AD, and MS Online. Okay. Oh, and these, so if it says something like that, you can either scope it to current user or you can run it as administrator, either one. This one will install it just for you. Administrator will install it for everybody. So now let's run the script. Looking good, looking good. Okay, Azure Cloud, O365 default. So for most of you are gonna be this default, uh, unless you're a government or something special. All right, it prompted me to log in, so let's log in. Okay, I got to approve the sign-in request. Do you have an Office 365 E5 license? Yes. Would you like to investigate an application? No. So that's pretty cool. Um, if you do investigate application, it's just going to investigate the application to see if it, uh, you know, is trying to access a mailbox or something. Because remember. A lot of this activity we're seeing with the breach was about espionage and um, not being caught. So they're just looking at your mailbox activity. Why? I don't really know. Could be trying to identify who the privileged user that can authorize bank transfers, maybe has access to certain sensitive data. 
maybe communications in the email. Who knows? Definitely wasn't ransomware, though, because if it was a ransomware attack, someone would get notified and people would investigate it and things like that. So there's no really ransomware stuff associated to this. It was all about not being caught. So set domain authentication or set federation, that, again, is checking to see if anybody's modifying the federation settings and you will see it if you're modifying it but if you haven't modified on that particular time window and maybe there was no log about it or anybody talking about it then why was this domain added update application and or certificates management oh this is uh you know was any certificates or secrets added to an application so the adversary might use that and leverage an existing application you have and add his own secrets and use that to his advantage. Update service principle, add service principle credentials. So did was there any new service principles created that you are not aware of? So if you're not tracking your service principles, you should be tracking your service principles and the secrets assigned to this application and auditing it and getting and understanding that visit and understanding that. And if it wasn't, then you want to know about it. Add app role assignment to service principal. So was more roles assigned to a service principal than it should have? And usually if adversary is going to add a service a role to a service principal, he's going to give it full access. So that's going to be very, very sketchy. But again, this is something normal. So if you're modifying service principles or adding roles, uh, you're going to see this activity. So searching for add OAuth to permission grant and consent to application in the UAL. So did someone give permission to an application via OAuth. You know, again, adversary will build an app and grant access uh, or try to get you to grant access for his app to access your stuff. And if you do, now he has access to your data. Searching for user logged in and logged in failure in the UAL. So that's the SAML. So looking at, you know, suspicious SAML activity. PowerShell logins to the mailbox. That's the login with the known mailbox ID. I'm sorry, known application ID that is used in the Exchange Online PowerShell module. And then PowerShell logins using a PowerShell application. That's the PowerShell application. If you're trying to log into the environment with PowerShell, there's an app ID for that too. All right, so once it's done, Remember, you're going to go to your desktop, go to export DIR, and here you have all the all your files. All right, guys, so hopefully this has been helpful. Um, just FYI, if you do have Azure Sentinel, you can uh, put these search strings inside your Azure Sentinel and get alerts from it so that you're alerted when those type of activities happen. And... That's pretty much it. I just wanted to share this to educate you on it and show you how the tool works. And, you know, it's not too hard. Um, and maybe dip your toes into PowerShell for the first time. So, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, please like and subscribe and stay safe.